And you know something I never did? And I made sure that my deputies di didn't do while I was sheriff? Is we never ever wrote anybody for not wearing a seatbelt. Never. Never did. Oh, that Sheriff Mack doesn't believe in seatbelts. He's lawless. He wants people to get hurt in traffic accidents. That's what, that's what the media is going to say when they hear me say that, isn't it? So, no, you can wear your seatbelt if you want to. Ah. Your choice. Amazing. We don't have, we don't hire officers to hover over you or to ride in your car with you or to stop you every corner to make sure your license and registration and your insurance and your seatbelt are all in order. Because we don't do that in America. Or at least we're not supposed to. That wasn't the country we signed on to. And now we've got to go back and sign on to the country that we were meant to be a part of. So that's all this is about. So then I'm, everything's going great. Everything's going smooth. Love my job. Love our, the place we're living. Kids, we live right across the street from the school. Everything's fine. Kids are doing fine, except Josh had some problems. Except the day that I had to go invest my, investigate my own son when he hit the school fire alarm. It could have been one of 700 kids, and it was mine. <laughs> and even on the way there to the call, I, the dispatcher told me what happened, and I said, I got about 100 feet from the school just ready to turn in. I go, please tell me it wasn't Josh. Get to the office, and there's Josh. Yeah, my son. So everything except that is going great in my job. And even that was kind of funny sometimes. And then some crazy people from Arizona call me and my wife and say, would you please move home and run for sheriff? We need an honest constitutional sheriff here. So well, you probably need one everywhere, you know? And I said, I told her my wife and I said, you know what? Your parents are absolutely crazy. And this was the first time she agreed with me. And she told them, no way. So then they had, of course, they had other people start calling me. Please move home. Run for sheriff. And uh, so I said to my wife, I said, look, before we go to bed, why, why, don't, why don't we just list all the pros and cons of why we can't run for sheriff. And then we'll send it down to your parents and they can pass it around to all their little friends and have everybody stop calling us. And so we listed all the cons and there was like 20 of them. I mean, there was just dozens and then there were two pros two two reasons why we should move home and run for sheriff two 20 to two that's i mean you know that's not even good in baseball you know so so we make up that list and we're totally convinced everything's fine and three weeks later we move home and run for sheriff that's the truth that's exactly what happened i still don't know where it happened that we all of a sudden said yes and we did and we felt the Lord's hand in a lot of this, to be quite honest with you. And w you need to understand this. I hadn't even lived in my hometown for 12 years. I had never been a peace officer in the state or the county where I'm telling people, make me your sheriff. Make me the head of law enforcement in your community. And they did. And four years later, I was reelected. Now it's 1992. And we're wondering what all this is for. Why did I move home? Why did, I, why did this miraculous victory happen? And then in 1993, we started catching winds of maybe why. In November of 93, Bill Clinton signs into law the Brady Bill. Hey, no big deal, huh? I wasn't, I wasn't too upset because the propaganda behind the Brady Bill was that it's simply a five-day waiting period so husbands can't get really ticked off at their wives while they're fighting. He gets in a heat of rage and runs down to the gun shop, buys a gun, comes back and kills her. It happens all the time. <laughs> in fact, no one can ever tell me when that's ever happened in the history anywhere of our country. You know? Usually, if he's going to do it, he does it with something else, if he doesn't have a gun. But anyway, that, they, they actually said that. That was the truth. They said that's what this will prevent. You know, the murder of rage from the husband shooting his wife, you know. And so then, we're having a sheriff's association meeting, and I need to tell you, there's only 15 counties in Arizona. Fifteen! You know, 
254 in Texas, that's the most. And there's three BATF agents, there's only 12 sheriffs at the meeting, and three agents of the BATF show up and give us this document. Department of the Treasury, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Washington, D.C., June 21st, 1994, okay? 25 pages, and they hand this to all the sheriffs and say, sheriffs, this is what you will do to comply with the Brady Bill. These are your marching orders. Whoa. So I think the reason they brought three is because they knew we were gonna be pretty pissed off and they wanted backup. That maybe we might kill one of them, but they, we won't do it to three of them, you know? But you never heard so much cussing in your life, and it wasn't just from me. All the sheriffs, especially Sheriff uh, Buchanan from Yavapai County, he was just enraged. The nerve of these guys thinking they can come in here and tell us what to do. Now, I already had, and several of us in the state already had contracts with the federal government to house federal prisoners. Why was there no negotiation or contract on this? They didn't ask us. This Congress comes in, makes a law. So when we're at the Supreme Court, Justice Scalia said, well, if the federal government can do that, then we can balance the budget tomorrow. And they're kind of going, that's a pretty big leap, Scalia. How can they do that? You know? And he goes, if the federal government has the authority to control the states, just tell the states to balance the budget. Ah, good point. And so we called a special meeting of the Sheriff's Association for the next week to find out what are we going to write a letter, send this document, all of them, back to Congress, CC it to the White House, let the Justice Department have a copy, make sure Janet Reno sees it, and we're going to sign a letter saying, thanks for sending the three BATF agents to our meeting, thanks for the marching orders, but you can have them back. We won't be doing it in Arizona. Now, what I'm telling you, that right there is mostly the answer for everything that you're concerned about. If you can get a group of sheriffs to sign that letter, how about gun control? Which I think, and, and I said this in Texas, I really don't think that the bulk of the sheriffs in Texas are gonna put up with any more gun control. I don't. I think Texas is where this is gonna start. And the sheriffs there, you get maybe, okay, there's 254, I think easy you get 150 in Texas to sign a letter that I just suggested that we should have done on the Brady Bill, and they say, dear White House and whoever in Washington, D.C., all congressmen and senators, so on and so forth, just be aware that there will absolutely be no more gun control. You can keep H.R. 45 and anything else you think you're going to do. There will be absolutely no more gun control in this state. And any efforts to license or disarm our potential posse members in our counties will be considered a criminal offense. Yeah. Now, do you think that'll have a little impact? Let me tell you, by personal experience, I know the federal government does not want to fight with your sheriffs. With your sheriff, single. They do not. And we have the proof uh, of that in numerous incidences. I'll share one just real quickly. When I was sheriff, the Board of Supervisors uh, in our county were going crazy. There's only three of them. They were going crazy with the Army Corps of Engineers who said that we couldn't repair a bridge that washed out during uh, a, a rainstorm that we had. Now this is in the east part of the county in Solomon where people who live only a half mile on the other side of the bridge, on the north side of the bridge, have to go a half mile to take their kids to school in the morning. That's it. But without that bridge, they have to do a 50 mile round trip. Yeah, 50 miles. Do you know how much families like to get up an extra hour just to go where they could go a half mile instead now they have to go? Yeah. In rural Arizona, we don't like those two-hour commutes. You know, you might like them out here, but we don't like them there, you know. And so um, the board finally votes unanimously 
to violate the orders of the Army Corps of Engineers, federal government, and just fix the bridge.